All right, guys. Medical minute. Oh, now they're calling me. All right. All right. So, medical minute. The correlation between venous gases and arterial blood gases. There's a recent article, and there's many, many articles that have been published on the subject. There is some slight discrepancy, obviously, on the exact values of PO2, specifically between a venous gas and our arterial gas. But for the most important stuff, which is the pH, the PCO2, um, obviously the pulse ox is going to be very different between a venous gas and an arterial gas. But for most practical purposes, the venous gas is going to give you excellent correlation to an arterial blood gas, which means you don't need to get arterial blood gas. And this article even says in any ER patient. Yet, we do them all the time. So why do we? Well, mostly because consultants don't trust the venous gases. There is some patients where an extremes of PCO2s or PO2s, you want to know exact values and you don't want to be estimating. But if you're doing for screening like a DKA or somebody's vomiting, diabetic, you do a venous gas. And if it's normal, it's normal. You don't have to go and do an ABG. If you do an, a, an a, a BBG and it's very abnormal, then sure, you go get the ABG. That'll certainly decrease the amount of ABGs we're getting. And the reason of not getting an ABG is obvious. It's very painful. It's a, a needle on an artery. They hurt a lot. Number two, they can cause scarring and problems with that artery. They can cause... Um, a clotting of that artery, so that's why you do the Allen test to make sure the circulation is okay, because if you cause any kind of trouble. The other key things it can cause is um, aneurysms over the artery, uh, pseudoaneurysms, arteriovenous fistulas, if you go in the groin and go through the artery and the vein, it can cause a, a permanent leak between the two. <coughs> so it's not something you want to do on every patient. Certainly if you can limit the amount of ABGs you get, it'll be quicker, because VBGs get done on venous uh, blood. It's less painful for the patient, and supposedly gives you the same information. So in my own practice, I can't get away of ABGs because the, C, the, the hospitals want it, the, the ICU doctors want the ABG. But I can do VBGs for most everybody, and when very abnormal, follow it up with an ABG, which certainly will decrease the amount of arterial gases we get, and that will be benefit to the patient, of course. So. Question. How instrumental would the uh, catenography be with the same Oh. Same argument, the hospitals probably wouldn't rely on that and they would want the arterial or venous or whatever. Um, for us, in practical purposes, you're monitoring over time and you're starting with the PCO2 that's 100 and you see it go down, then you, you know you're getting better. Why do you need to confirm with the gas? Um, we're practical people. We know how to use the information available. But hospitals, internists, um, ICU doctors are not going to rely on that. All right.